Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott. And my name is Noelle McFoy. That was ASAP Fighter and I on piano. ASAP, what song is that? Guantanamara. Nice. <laughs> I guess that should be, that's one of your normal ones you play. Yeah. So. But now we should recognize that. But yes. it's Friday, you guys. Happy Friday. Um, it's been a good week. It's been a pretty quick week. But the weekend is upon us. Um, and what's the weather looking like for us, Scott? The weather looky, is looking um, colder and colder. But, of course, during the day, it's going to be nice and sunny and warm for, you know, for fall weather. Yeah. But regardless of that, it is currently 28 degrees outside. Freezing temperatures happening when the sun is gone. But, of course, when the sun is shining, you can expect highs of 56 and lows of 27. Wow, that's a huge And then through the weekend... Drop. You can have a high of 56 and a low of 33, and then basically throughout the weekend you're going to have highs in the 50s and lows in the 30s. So the gap gets wider and wider as we get into our winter weather stuff. It but sure of course, does. Um, it's it's Friday, and there's a lot going on Friday. Not only is it Friday's first Friday, Noel has a first Friday events coming up later in the show. I should. Um, I have a whole bunch of videos for you guys. Uh, to awesome. show you, uh, we have a bunch of brand new programming, uh, but of course the one thing I do want to um, talk about is uh, Hacksaw Ridge. It's a new movie that just recently came out. It uh, tells the story of Desmond Doss, who is a non-combat, um, non-combat or non-combat or in World War One, um, and he basically won the Medal of Honor. Sweet. And of course, uh, you know, he he, uh, he took his stand and he said he didn't want to kill anyone. He uh, of course, I have an interview from him, and it kind of kind of shows exactly what's going on with that. So I'm going to show you a little bit of this, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about it after this. The question arises today, are there any heroes left? And what is a hero? Is a hero someone who kills a lot of enemy, or is a hero someone that does a very important act to save lives? We're very privileged here in our community to have Desmond and Francis Doss with us as we talk about his life as a true hero in World War II as a non-combatant who won a Congressional Medal of Honor. Desmond, have you always been a Christian? Yes. I think the first place my mother took any of our three children to church and they're still going. And she always took a godly example before our three children. She didn't ask us to do anything but she didn't set the right example before us. What are the things in your life that would cause you to make that decision to not take life? Well, my father, when my mom, uh, dad was first married over 80 years ago, he bought the picture of the Ten Commandments. And uh, I always looked at that picture of how Cain had killed his brother Abel. And I wondered how in the world could a brother do such a thing? And it put such a heart in my life that I never wanted to take life of anyone. So as a result, when the time finally came for him to go into service, I asked to get into the medical corps as a non-combatant because we as Seventh-day Adventists are known as non-combatants. And of course, that movie just recently came out today, and you That's can watch awesome. it anytime. And of course, oh uh, yeah, now playing. Cool. And so, um, where is the movie showing? <laughs> Everywhere. So like major the... select theaters, check okay. your theater listings, all that stuff. Oh. Uh, it's a uh, story of Desmond Doss, who is a non-combatant. He joined the medical corps because he thought he wouldn't have to uh, fire a gun. And of course, they gave guns to uh, medical officers, uh -huh. and he was just like, I don't need a gun. And they're just like, it's like. I'm not going to kill anyone, just so you know. It's just like, well, we respect your views. But you're still going to war. Yeah. So while he was at war, he's just like, well, you know, I'm going to hang around and save people. So he saved over 70 people. Wow. Just, you know, just running back and forth and carrying people back. And he, yep. That's really neat. Cool, Scott. Well, you guys, up next, we've got some news articles. So this is what's going on kind of in your community around the world. So... <coughs> Excuse me. At first, I got this from the Missoulian. So the United, United States Fish and Wildlife is proposing a dramatic reorganization of the National Wildlife Refuge System in Montana mm. and seven other states that would result in significant staff and program cuts. 
Um, so in the reorganized Western Montana complex, for example, the number of employees at Benton Lake, Swan River, Trail, Lost Trail, Nine Pipe, Lee Metcalf, and the National Bison Range Refuge will drop from 26 to 14. Wow. So that's a big, significant amount. Um, but the system has undergone budget cut reductions that have required cuts in staffing. So it's kind of, it's all across the United States. Um, and then so they also are trying to look for creative solutions and increase reliance on volunteers. So they're working more with landowners and ranch owners since their staffs are starting to be cut in half, basically. Um, and so the proposal calls for Montana to be carved into three large wetland management <coughs> districts in western, central, and northeast Montana, while staff would be shared among refugees or refuges. Um, and so instead of assigning staff members to specific areas, they're all just going to kind of pool names and no one will really be in a specific area. And so with because of this, there are many people that play important roles that will lose their jobs and their roles aren't going to be filled again or else they will be filled kind of like half half haphazardly, half, haphazardly, like halfway, um, by someone else has that already has a million other things on their plate. Right. Um, yeah, so, but they are operating on a five-year time frame, so these changes won't happen right away, just within the next five years. But we'll see a significant um, reduction, I guess, in maintenance. They also haven't had a lot of, like, some areas haven't had maintenance crews in a long time. Um, yeah. So it's interesting how they want to stabilize our environment and make sure that our environment is good for everyone, but, but they also have to reduce budget cuts and cut staff. So it kind of... Which a lot of times includes waiting staff to yeah. do those kind of repairs that mm -hmm. are needed. So I think a lot of ways what they're thinking is probably there's like, oh, we can just do a contract. We can contract people. That's exactly it. But or, you can't trust contractors. Or they're relying on landowners and ranchers to be responsible for their land. Yeah, yeah. it's... It's, a, it's an interesting job, especially living in Montana. We such we live in such a wide area, and it's we have true. even like our national our park rangers, the rangers that you know patrol these particular areas. Like there's like one or two per like fifty square miles. It's very true. Yeah, there's hardly any. No. Um, and then my other news story that I got from the Missoulian is: Did you guys know that Missoula has an abandoned vehicle option? So every six months, uh, the state, of, the city of Missoula will auction off all the abandoned e vehicles that they have found all throughout our city. So Thursdays was the first was the first one in six months. Um, Nine hundred dollars was the highest price paid, um, and so the city holds this every six months. Wow. And their minimum price that they ask for, a base price is $85. So it starts at $85 and goes all the way upward. Um, and so only cash or check is accepted at the auction, and you can't leave to get money. And so all cars are sold as is, but most have don't have keys since they were towed. So... Um, so pro, they hold all the cars at pro towing, and they help you get the cars out of the lot. But if you buy three or more, you have to wait until the end, so to start moving your cars. Right. So they had such cars as like a 1998 Chevy C15 pickup, which sold for $200, a 2002 Toyota Avalon missing the passenger side window and mirror, sold for 100, a mint green 95 Dodge Caravan didn't sell and only had one offer of 50 bucks, but you know, bottom line is 85. And a lengthy back and forth and shoot for two tone green and gray 91 Chevy Silverado ending at $700. $700. And then the $900 went to a 2005 Volkswagen Jetta. So that's pretty cool. That happens every six months. So you know, you guys keep We missed it. And, yeah, we did miss it. We totally so, missed it. So stay tuned. But um, that's pretty cool and that's fun. And so I was reading the article and pretty much it seemed like all the guys that went there were just a bunch of car guys. This one guy said that he bought a car for $85 that didn't have room or tires but he wasn't worried about it because he has uh, like a hundred other cars and he'll get rims and tires or something else <laughs> which I thought that was pretty awesome so that happens every six months so stay tuned for that you guys in six months from now and then my last event or my last um, news story I got this from CNN was Melania Trump she was finally back on well you know the election I guess the campaign trail for public speaking her last speech didn't go over very well when she plagiarized a 2008 speech from Michelle Obama and um, even at all the conventions and all the times when she was seen with her husband she rarely spoke even at a charity event that happened a few weeks ago when they poked fun at her speech she didn't 
say anything or stick up for herself or anything. Um, so she spoke at an event in Philadelphia, which is in, it's a, in a suburb of Philadelphia. Um, and she wanted to work on a, improving a social media culture that has gotten too main and too tough with riddled with insults based on looks and intelligence. So she basically wants to stop cyberbullying if she becomes a first lady. However, I believe that it is very, very ironic because her husband, Donald Trump, is the biggest troll of them all. He's no. on Twitter. Um, relentlessly attacking political foes, journalists, critics, and other entertainers for years uh, with demeaning comments. And she actually didn't mention anything of him, Donald Trump, or anything about that during her speech. Um, but she gave her speech, she detailed her upbringing in Slovenia, talked about looking up to Ronald Reagan in her youth and pursuing a career in fashion and modeling. Um, and she also ended the biographical portion of her speech by telling the crowd at the Mainline Sports Center indoor training facility how she was on to become an American citizen. It is also very ironic how Trump is very against immigrants coming to the United States and really wanting to strengthen our borders when his wife is an immigrant. Um, so his wife is, a, is an immigrant, and he's like the biggest troll of them all. So Donald Trump is full of, um, what's the hypocrisies? Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. Um, and so that she gave the speech, but the speech was in a suburb of Philadelphia, so it was kind of geared towards white women, kind of like white housewives. So, but that area is not statistically voting for Trump or for Trump, so it's, it makes sense that they went and gave a speech in that area. So she gave a speech, it turned out okay, and her main goal is to stop cyberbullying if she becomes the first lady. So I got those stories on the Missoulian, and then my last one about Melania Trump was on CNN. Cool. Of course, I have a quick little uh, overview of your city council meeting, and I'm not gonna. I don't have any videos for you because I just watched the thing. It was mostly presentations, so I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of what they were talking about in the city council meetings. And I think one of the things is that the Missoula's winter market has, well a big change as in they're changing their venue to Elks Lodge ever since the Hive um, sold to um, uh, actually like had to deal with the uh, international school mm -hmm. and um, they are no longer going to be called the winter market the Missoula's winter market they're gonna be called Missoula Valley <laughs> winter market they added the valley because you know the more you have to say, the more it explains things. Yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> the hours will be changed uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, to 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. instead. So that's kind of like the old traditional farmer's market. They want to keep it 9 to 1 p.m. And um, since a lot of the market is technically closed, right? It's like Prince over. It's like oh, it's last, all over. It's, it's all over, now. yeah. Like I was there just the other weekend. I was just like, this there is kind of like sad. There were like two or three stands out. Yeah. yeah, it's done now. But the idea behind this one is just to continue if anyone have any like late vegetables, like apples and like stuff that doesn't perish as fast as other stuff um, to kind of continue to keep doing this um, at the Elks Lodge, Indoor Farmers, Winter Valley, Missoula Valley Market, Valley, Valley thing. The I'm Valley. Called. We're in the Valley. My and Bob. Be a valley and market. yeah, and you guys can do this uh, every uh, Saturday until the mar Farmer's Market, uh, I guess, starts again mm -hmm. in a way. At the end I of May. That's, yeah. Yeah. End of May. So that's really cool. And so where is the Elks Lodge? It's off of... Um, Let's see, is it Patty in front? Oh, is it right by Stage 112? Yeah, Stage 112 oh, is oh, the Elks Lodge. Oh, Stage 112. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know it by Stage 112 because I'm a nighttime girl. Well, they changed that name so often. It's kind of uh, hard to like stay with Stage 112 because it used to be one thing and it used to be another. They rebranded mm -hmm. themselves at Stage 112s, if you already know, and it's across the street from the Mercantile, which I haven't heard anything of going on with kinda the Mercantile. Like so it's I've like been watching diagonal. City Council and they have not mentioned the Mercantile like at all. It's yeah. just like everything just kind of like stopped and everyone's like, I don't care. And I think maybe those guys like pulled out and just like, you guys are, are cray cray. Yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> They're too much over there. <laughs> Big hippies. They don't want to sell anything. But um, <laughs> moving on, uh, admin and finance, they were talking about the um, the jail diversion program. They're trying to trying to revamp it, re uh, initiate, and trying to figure out w who would be perfect for this program. And this is uh, it's supposed to help people who don't need to be in jail to serve time, kind of like outside, inside of jail. And one of the bigger things from the meeting was uh, Council Member 
Bentley, who gave a presentation uh, along with the commissioner, rep, state senator, a state senator, and under sheriff Jason Johnson. So a lot of people are uh, really involved in this thing, and they could continue the meeting until next Wednesday. Uh, they had the presentation. They talked a little bit about it. Uh, I mean, they talked a lot about it. There's a lot of information about it, but there wasn't much talking back and forth. Uh, one of the things that John Wilkins, uh, um, he he, I got he got a little bit of an argument with Emily Bentley uh, because he he has a. Uh, a the thing is that a council member has to kind of take themselves out of it if they have some kind of stake in it. And it's Wilkins true. is married to a woman who works for the detention center. Mm -hmm. So she definitely, like, he definitely has a stake in it. Yeah. So he has to kind of take himself out of the voting because mm -hmm. he has to abstain from voting and whatnot. But he's just like, well, I got an opinion. And just like, okay. okay but and he makes sense. <laughs> and it totally made sense. He's like, there's so many programs already in place for this. It seems very interesting that um, the city of Missoula has a tendency to... Um, have m more new programs that help people rather, rather than, than using the, using the existing have. programs yeah. and enhancing those. I have a nice story that I heard about a program that they're doing in the several uh, state prisons around the United States. I think it's, I don't know how many it is in, but it's called One Day with God. And it's about how um, they're like, I think it's like three million children all over the United States have at least one parent that is incarcerated in jail. Oh. So what this program does is it has these children go to the jail and they get to spend an entire day with their parents. Wow. Yeah, and I just thought it was so nice. So it was this video, um, I believe it was CBS. And so yeah, so these kids got to go to this jail and got to spend the whole day with their parents. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I was bawling, like just seeing the reaction on their faces and like their hopes and fears and dreams. And yeah. I think that's a wonderful program. And it would be something great that Montana maybe could implement because it would be very hard to have a parent incarcerated yep. or to never meet him. One little girl yep. and was of course, eight years old and she had never met her dad before. That actually reminds me of something that they do in Montana. Oh, good, that has yeah. nothing to do with this program. Uh -huh. You know, like there's always a bunch of new programs yeah. that come in. <laughs> yeah. It's like the existing program that they have there, they have parenting classes in jails. I think that's great. And it's a 10 week course, yeah. uh, six classes out of mm -hmm. 10 weeks, and they basically teach. Uh, Inmates to um, yeah, you know about, about what what it be what it is to be a responsible parent what it means to uh, have this and there's been a couple people in there who's taken it more than a couple times that's just to awesome. kind of get an idea and th a lot of people have had a positive response for this so that's another program yeah and there's well, just a lot of little programs and it seems as though they need to all kind of cooperate and have well, one big cooperation existing program programs that really like, helps people. Programs like that, I feel like, give these inmates a lot more incentive to get out of jail and to do well and yeah. be there for their families. So I think that having the kids right there telling their parents that they need them really is yeah. what gets them through it. Well, I think the best thing that the city of Missoula should do, and this is my opinion, blah, 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 <laughs> is that the jail diversion program should be like an umbrella yeah. And they should kind of spend most of the time trying to get people, uh, different organizations to work with them yep. and under their umbrella to kind of make a connection and find many different options for those people. And then, that, and then that way yeah. it, work, it works. It's like selling. It's like selling cars. It's like selling real estate. It's like, you know, you can talk to my buddy Reg. He can check over your house. He's an inspector. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's like, it's the same thing. It's just like, oh, you know, there's my buddy Reg. He also can help you find a job once you leave jail. And it's just mm -hmm. like, oh, really? It's like, oh, and his buddy uh, Bill, he can help you find a, like a, a nice, cheap uh, start, <laughs> a secondary home just kind of like get there mm -hmm. while you're while you're looking for that job that reg got yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah so it would be great if all these programs could work together so yeah. scott will keep us updated on yep. how that and goes. it will be next wednesday they'll probably talk on it during the admin and finance committee and i'm going to end my segment with what's new on mcat tonight Ooh. which will uh, springboard us into events with noelle and she has a lot to talk about because it's uh first friday mm -hmm. stuff but of course, here's a bunch of new programming that will keep you busy throughout the whole entire weekend.
This was a phrase they used a lot with me when I was growing up, real life. And I would always think to myself, what does that mean? I mean, what, what life is not real, you know? And I, so I would like watch them to see what they meant by real life. And what they meant by real life appeared to be, in my father's case, your dream is to be an orchestra conductor. Therefore, you become a vice president of marketing. In my mother's case, it was, you dream of being a scientist. Therefore, you get married at the age of 19 and have children and be a stay-at-home mother. And they were not happy. I mean... In December of 1900, the U.S. Army established the Division of Military Information in the Philippines, creating the first field intelligence unit in the 100-year history of the U.S. Army. After assuming command of this fledging unit in early 1901, Captain Ralph Van Diemen, a man later known as the father of U.S. military intelligence, collected comprehensive data on the Filipino elite in every municipality. Hi, Missoula. We are back. And as Scott has said, it's First Friday. So what I have for you are artwork classes, uh, First Friday galleries, and some music for tonight. So at first, at noon, over at the Missoula Public Library, we have our watercolor painting class. That is from noon to two. It'll be in the large meeting room and is open to ages 18 and up. And then we have yarns. That's going to be at the Missoula Public Library also at noon. This is for knitters and crocheters to get together. You guys can craft, gossip, eat some lunch. That'll be in the boardroom. And then uh, we take a nap and then we wake up finally at about three o'clock and then go over to the Zoo Town Arts Community Center for the Friday afternoon comic club at 3.30. Um, and then so it's it's six week it's a six week program this is about I think this is like week four or five but they've been creating a single multi-plan panel cartoon be included in Zach's comics and then we go into our first Friday galleries so uh, Steve Slocum will be at the Montana Natural History Center with his sunburst wildflowers that starts at 4 30 and then over at Radius Gallery, we have a third annual holiday show that starts at 5 o'clock. And what it is, let's see, so it's, I think what it looks like is unique gifts. So I think it's just like a bunch of arts and crafts that you can buy as well as artwork that you can check out. And then Missoula Symphony is going to be playing tonight for their first Friday. They're going to be playing at the Public House, which is located on 130 East Broadway, starting at 5 o'clock. And then over at Gallery 709 inside Montana Art and Framing is assortments by Bob Finney and let's see, Eloise Jeter. Um, and looks like it's encompassing a wide range of subjects, mediums, textures, and techniques. And I've got a picture for you guys so you guys can, this is what you can expect to see at their art showing. Ooh. Yeah, some nice watercolors. Well, that's watercolor? I have no idea. No. It's something. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, they use different mediums, you guys. It's probably acrylic. <laughs> It probably is. I don't know anything about art. <laughs> Over at Betty's Divine, they have got the best of Betty's photo shoots starting at 5 o'clock. So, uh, of course, they've got awesome clothing. This is a boutique. And so they do photo shoots from 2014 all the way to 2016. So over the past two years, you guys will see the best of their photo shoots and the best of their clothing. And then, <coughs> Excuse me. And then over at E3 Convergence Gallery, Brian Christensen, Missoula, I'm Coming Home. Uh, and this is what you guys can expect to see from his artwork. Ooh. Like some awesome uh, photography. And so he said that he's not really, didn't really leave Missoula and is coming back. He's been here for seven years, but he has now just rediscovered how gorgeous Missoula is again. So that's hence his artwork title, I'm Coming Home. And then over at Imagination Brewing Company, they've got the Art of the Vote. So it's going to be joining art and voting together. The tables will be providing information about the state and district candidates, as well as issues and ballot initiatives uh, that will be on the ballot November 8th. 
We have a gallery night over at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Montana Properties, which is located on Higgins Avenue, I do believe. Starting at 5 o'clock, it's going to be Missoula artist Nancy Reshoff, which she has been on our show a few times, and she always comes into my work at Taco Del Sol. Um, and so she is a very, very fun, a very creative painter, as well as a hat maker. So she'll have lots of cool hats for sale, and you guys can try on and check out, as well as some really fun watercolors. At Four Ravens Gallery, we have got handmade wearables in leather, silk, cotton, and wool. We, this is by four artists. Um, and the mediums include sewn leather, dyed and printed silk, woven fibers, and felted wool. That's pretty awesome. It's some fabric show, art show. Uh, and then over at Gecko Design, starting at 5 o'clock, we have got Marlo Crossifiso, and it's called Return to the City. And so this is inspired by her recent trip back from New York City, and this is what you guys can expect to see at her art show. That's really cool. At Gecko Designs. It is really cool. Up next, we have got Entomologlyphs by Larry Evans. This will be at Lake Missoula Tea Company starting at 5. And so, Entomologlyphs, Entomoglyphs, let's see, hang on one sec, you guys. Entomologlyphs, I don't know. Okay, so what this is, is it roughly means insect writing. It represents a fusion of natural insect and human artwork. And so what he does is he's got some logs, and then he draws on the logs and follows all the different weavings and insect roots that are on the logs, thus with the word as I just butchered. Huh, sounds um, like uh, tracing. Yeah, kind of like that, yeah. Um, and so that'll be at Lake Missoula Tea Company starting at 5 o'clock. And then at the artist shop, we've got Wild and Scenic Original Oils by Annie, we Annie Eastwood. Um, and you guys could check this out. This is what you can expect to see at her art show. And that is super vibrant and colorful. Not to mention pretty gorgeous. All right. And then Habitat for Humanity. They've got a first Friday starting at 5 o'clock. This will be at A&E Art Architects. Um, and so they're celebrating their 25th year in Missoula County, and they're building their 50th and 51st homes this year. So you can celebrate with them. Then over at Bathing Beauty's Beads, we've got Zober Jewelry by Zoe Moore that starts at 5 o'clock. This is what you guys can expect to see from her art show and her jewelry, and she'll have pieces for sale most definitely. And then up next, we have got Frontier Space. We'll meet on the on edges soon. This starts at 5 o'clock. And so I'll read you guys what he says about his artwork. He makes dense, strongly tactile drawings that reward slow, patient looking, and forcefully manipulate viewers' movements using multiple layers and focal depths. And so you guys can check this out. And this is what you can expect to see from his art show at the Frontier Space tonight. And all of this artwork, all these galleries, usually open about 5 and end around 8 o'clock. And then over at Grizzly Hackle Fly Shop, we've got A State of Mind Photography by Travis Bradford, starting at 5 o'clock. And it's all about um, fly fishing, and he's exploring the state of mind that fly fishing brings us into. At the Clay Studio, they've got a community exhibit um, starting at 5.30. So what this is, is create, work created by students, members, and studio artists. And you guys can expect to see this from their art show. Some very delicate teacups. And I'm sure that Rick will have an art show um, art clip for us. And then, by Fact and Fiction. Oh, wait, I think I've got one more. Oh, no, that was it. Okay. So, and then over at Fact and Fiction, Brian D. Ambrosio has got a lecture and a discussion. It's called Shot in Montana. And it's a history of Big Sky Cinema. He's got a presentation and a signing. Mm. Yeah. And then over at Frame of Mind, we've got Art of Bayer. And it starts at 5.30. And so what it is, it's Monty Dolak and Beer. It's Art of Bayer. So it's Monty Dolak's artwork that they've made specifically for Bayer and Brewing Company. Um, as well as there'll be tastings of beers that are inspired by the iconic artwork on Bayer and Beer labels, such as Oktoberfest, Dancing Trout, and much more. So this is what you guys can expect to see from their art show uh, put on by Monty Dolak. And that'll be at a frame of might. Yeah. All right. And then over at Loose Moose, we've got mushroom portrait art. It starts at 5.30. And so this artist is offering to draw your portrait with your favorite mushroom character. That's kind of cute, right? 
And then over at Upcycled, starting at 5.30, this event is pretty sweet. It's called Just My Type Journals. And so what it is, is this woman from Just My Type Journals uh, makes, oh, you know, journals from repurpose wood, game boards, old books, and more. Um, and they're elegantly refillable, holding up to three 6x9 notebooks as the journal's interior. So you can make a journal, and then you can even fill it yourself. So that's at Upcycled. That starts at 5.30. Now we've got some music. Um, oh, no, no, there's a photography student show at, and music at Zootown Brew at 6. And now we have music by Travis Yost at the Missoula Brewing Company at 6 o'clock. Um, and then there's an Irish music session also at 6 at the Union Club. And then at Real Good Art Space, this is located on the west side, right by the Clay Studio in the same neighborhood. They've got the Haunted House of Representatives. It starts at 7 o'clock. And so what it is is that you can cast your vote for either zombie candidate or a ghost candidate. Um, and you can dress as a zombie or ghost for yourself. They will have prizes for the best costume. And a debate is moderated by Jill Frankenstein, which will be held at 8 o'clock. And I'm just going to go there and just say, guys, listen. <sighs> Halloween's over. Get yeah. over yourself. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, the proprietor of Real Good Art Space, Jack Metcalf, is actually running um, for Justice of the Peace. And so he... Did you just say Real Good Art? Is that the name Real of Good the Art story? Space. Real, Real Good Art Space? Real Good Art Space is the name. Oh, come on, Scott. Stepping Well, it's called mental. Real Good Art Space. It's really good. It's like, really? Real good. And I thought that the good food store was a cop out. <laughs> You've never met Jack Metcalf, have you? Maybe. <laughs> he hasn't. So he's running for uh, Justice of the Peace. You guys can go there and get kind of, they're really silly over there. Every art show that they do is very interactive. It's a very audience oriented and it's really, really fun. Maybe you should go, Scott. Uh, as an audience oriented, oriented as in saying, okay, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. And it's like, okay, settle down. Like, you heard us the first time, just get on with it. That's If that's the uh, kind of interaction there is, then you can kind of... It's not. Yeah, but if you're into that kind of thing, you should totally go. <laughs> it's, it's not like that. <laughs> it's not like that at all. It's different. You guys should totally go. Okay, so Mickey Avalon is going to be live at Monk's at 9 o'clock tonight. Um, and then over at the VFW, they've got First Friday with the very most and three-year day job. It starts at 9 o'clock. Um, and it's $3 for 21 and up, or it's $6 for 18 and up. Head for the Hills will be playing at the Top Hat Lounge at 9.30. Sunrise Saloon has hosting 406. They'll be playing at 9.30. Gladys Friday will be at the Union Club at 9.30. And then Harmar Superstar and Sweet Spirit will be at the Palace Lounge at 10 o'clock. Yeah. So that's what I've got going on for you guys. Up next, we've got musical Well, notes um, before with... we go to a musical events, I really want to show an art clip. And then because oh. we have a huge introduction for musical events, and I yes, kind of want to like... Uh, throw it to Art Clip, okay. and then we get to ASAP. He has a big musical notes for you guys today, right after this brand new Art Clip, uh, courtesy of Courtney Blazon. This is going to be a delight. This is probably one of the better musical notes with ASAP. And I hope your television audience will have fun with this. It's that time of year, 
for mu uh, musical notes with ASAP's top 10 stories for 2016. Woo! And if you guys remember when, we, when I did it for 2015, Sally Field was number one. This is Doubtfire and the Flying Nun. You remember that one? Yep. <laughs> and of all the hundreds of stories I've done to this day, my personal favorite is Mark Goddard, the actor that plays Major Don West on Lost in Space. Remember we did that one and he and we did uh, uh, Johnny Ringo when he mm -hmm. was calling a lightning fast guy that took on two gunfighters. Remember that clip? Yep. <laughs> so now it's time to do our top 10. And this was harder for me this year because I have done hundreds of stories so they're all basically good, you know, Wake Up Missoula and so on. But I had to select 10 and this was based on the reaction of you two and the amount of views on the um, computer, Facebook, and um, YouTube, and so on. So anyway, starting with number 10, I did the story, Eugene Patton, known to the world as Gene Gene the Dancing Machine on the Gong Show, and there he was. <laughs> and this is the guy that was a stagehand who entertained the crowd during commercial break, and then they, Chuck Barris on the far right here, put him on the show, and he did it uh, while they were putting on different acts on, especially someone got gong for being terrible, and he was a hit. Number nine, Jack Wilde, the young actor that plays Jimmy on H.R. Puffin stuff, and I mentioned that he was one of the greatest child stars in history, second to Shirley Temple, and he made a staggering million dollars for playing this character here on H.R. Puffin stuff. We talked about that. Number eight, we talked about um, the original Green Hornet radio broadcast serials. This was before Van Williams and Bruce Lee. This is like 20 years earlier, 1940. They had a series of 13 movie serials that they actually did, and each week when the Green Hornet was about to get wiped out, <laughs> they'd have the, the credits going up in the air with the flight of the bumblebee in the background, and uh, he'd save the day and so on. So that, those were fun. Number seven, I did the story on the history of Afro Sheen. <laughs> and I did that clip with the um, Eddie Murphy movie when the three African American people were sitting on the couch and they get up and there's a ring on the circle. That yeah. comes from Afro Sheen because it was so oily, like pouring Crisco on your hair. Yeah. And then we talked about the Jerry girl, the Jerry Curl, which became known as Scary Curl. Yeah. <laughs> and we talked about uh, George Johnson, the creator of. Um, Afro Sheen and in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, African American people wore their hair like this, like on Soul Train or something, and they were walking around with these big round heads. <laughs> I just love the Afro. I love yeah. it too, it's awesome. But it was hard to keep up, and it fell out of favor eventually, but that's the way it was then. Number six is Barbara Billingsley, the best mom in television history. We talked about her leave it to Beaver, and she had such a pure, wholesome image. That's why it was so funny when she was on airplane speaking jive with these two African-American fellas, and I talked about how one of, the one on the far left was sick, eating bad fish, and he was trying to communicate with the stewardess, and she couldn't understand him. And Barbara Billingsley's character comes up and says, Stewardess, I speak jive. And uh, the, the conversation they had, uh, they're gonna get you on the bad side, blood, and all that stuff. It was just such funny um, conversation with that scene. Cut me some slack, Jack. You wouldn't sp think that Barbara Billingsley would talk like that, but that's why it worked. And number five, Carol Channing. Yeah, here she is, Carol Channing, number five. She's known to the world as singing Diamonds Are Girl's Best Friend, but she had a comical character called Cecilia Sisson, who was a silent film star. We talked about that. And then she got fired when she went into talking pictures because every time she would say the letter S, she would whistle. <laughs> <laughs> and there she is on the Andy Williams show telling the audience how come she got fired from that because she couldn't speak English very well. And when she did, it was always a whistle and a letter S. So that was fun. Number four, uh, we talked about Secret Squirrel, Agent 000, sometimes nothing, 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 and his sidekick, Morocco Mo, based on Peter Laurie and the Mr. Moto murder mystery series. And what was interesting about this cartoon here, it's a parody of James Bond as we talked about, and it's also a spin-off because usually when a television show has a, a famous character, they'll have a spin-off. So Secret Squirrel is the only cartoon to ever be a spin-off from Adam Ant, and I just thought that was interesting to talk about. Number three is Ken Berry, and of course he's a prolific, fantastic dancer, one of the best dancers in Hollywood history. 
and uh, you wouldn't know it when you see him on F Troop, <laughs> and you wouldn't know it when you see him on Mama's Family, and of course when we when he did his more serious role on Mayberry RFD, this is the episode where he adopted those three children: one African American, one Asian, and one white. And uh, ABC wasn't ready for that type. Yeah. Um, Adventure at that time. Yeah, adventure, yeah. <laughs> That's the way to put it. Very true, yeah. That's really but, uh, yeah. It was a fun, it was a good show, and it, it was relevant at that time, or at least it would be today. Mm -hmm. Number two, Diana Rigg, um, the original Emma Pill from the Avengers. We talked about her, and we showed those clips when she was beating up that guy with a stocking cap over his head. Yeah. <laughs> and the other guy that was up on top of the, the um, tower of the swimming pool, and she judo kicks him, and... He falls in the water, and he all, and she always saved John Steed, her companion on the series. So that was a fun British series. And finally, Barbara Bain, the sexiest spy on television. We talked about her and her work on Mission Impossible as Cinnamon Carter, and working with all the rest of the I Am Force Impossible Missions Force team. And she's number one for 2016, and I think she deserves it. I, I just think she's a fine actress, and she also did um, Space 1999 and a lot of other movies I wouldn't have time to mention. So that's my top ten stories for 2016. So hey, would you see, think that uh, she uh, outranks uh, Sally Field? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Really? You think yeah. so? How yeah. come? Huh. Well, it's hard to explain. You had to be there. I mean, Mission Impossible is such a fine show. There'd be no Mission Impossible without Lucille Ball, as you know. Mm -hmm. like, we talked about that, because Lucy owns the, owned the Destiny Lou Studios where they shot Mission Impossible and mm -hmm. Star Trek. And she gave both of those shows a chance, even though she didn't understand it, because she's a comedian. Yeah, she, she probably had no yeah. idea, yeah. She didn't. When she was reading the script, she was making the decision. She decided to give him a chance. And getting back to answering your question about Barbara Bain, she's so smooth, very sneaky, and just always had that look. <laughs> <laughs> Very mysterious, yeah. I remember the scene when she was flipping that, that patient was having surgery, she flipped it over mm -hmm. and stuff like that and rigging the card games and burning up all the money and setting that ambassador up, all those scenes <laughs> there. So, yeah. Nice. I think that in my book, she outranks Sally Field. Nice, okay. So, Thanks, Asaph. Thank you, Asaph. that note, Asaph. I will stop. That I think that's a great way to uh, end, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, that's a great way to uh, kick off a first Friday for all uh -huh. y'all, but of course, uh, Noel has her weekend events mm -hmm. coming up after this, which is um, from the Day of the Dead art show and art installation at the Zach, which will end on Monday. So you get a chance to see it, go on this weekend, or check it out this art walk if you can. So um, when we come back, we'll have your, the rest of your events and the end of the show. Hi you guys, we are back and we've got some events happening on your Saturday. So this is what's going on over your weekend. Um, at uh, okay, so at 8:45, meeting in the UM's at UM Adams Center parking lot in the northwest corner. Um, there is going to be a Metcalf Refuge, which attracts late migrant birds. So you guys show up there. It's a free trip. It's open to the public. Bring a lunch, binoculars, and obviously some nice warm clothing and some good shoes to walk around in. Um, and they're going to be out in Stevensville. So it'll be Five Valleys Audubon for a full day uh, field trip to discover these species. 
And then this is pretty great. This is for all of you avid skiers, snowboarders, or just novices that want to get into the sport. Um, over at Big Sky High School, they've got their SOS Fair Missoula Gear Swap starting at 9 a.m. And so it's an opportunity to swap outdoor gear. They have out adult downhill, teller, and cross country skis, boots and poles, adults and children's snowboards and boots, children's downhill and cross country skis, boots and poles, hockey gear, skates, ski racks, adult and children's jackets, pants, hats, and gloves. Yeah, there'll also be local vendors with preseason discounts and ski passes, ski board tune ups, skis, board packages, weekend getaways, and chiropractic massage care for those long, hard days out on the slopes. So, Big Sky High School has all the outdoor gear swap you can want plus some local vendors so you guys want to get into the sport need some new gear some new used gear go on down then over at first lutheran classical school they got their annual art and craft fair starts at nine o'clock and then at the Lucky Strike Restaurant, we've got Puzzle Club that also starts at 9 o'clock. This is for the, this is a, a brain injury support group. It's helping folks find the pieces of their life after a brain injury and place, after brain injury. Yeah, so they're going to play puzzles to help um, improve their brain skills. And then over at the Missoula International School, they have a scholastic chess tournament um, starting at 9.30 a.m. Registration starts at 9.30. Uh, the entry fee is only $5. First round starts at 11. All players will play five rounds. Bring chess equipment if you have it. Some will be provided. There will be no concessions, so bring a lunch and some snacks. And then over at the Missoula Fencing Association, starting at 10 a.m., they are having a rake-a-thon. So the Missoula Fencing Association, their youth, will be raking leaves on Saturday as a community service and fundraiser to purchase equipment and provide scholarships for club members. Um, so members will rake for six hours, rain or shine, and they're expected to rake 30 lawns for elderly or disabled people. That's nice. That's, yeah, that's wonderful. Like, giving back to the community. That's awesome. Way to go, Missoula Fencing Association. Um, and then over at Roots Acro Sports Center, we have our trampoline jam. This starts at 10 a.m. This is a structure dropping class that focuses on front flip and back flip progression, so kind of helps you with that. And it is ages 5 years to 12 years. And then over at Taste Buds Kitchen, they've got a sushi rolls family cooking workshop for ages 6 to 9, starting at 11 o'clock. And then over at Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium is Mouth Part Microscope Adventures. It starts at noon. Um, and so they're going to be talking about anthropod mouth parts and how they come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes and uh, what they are using their mouths for. You know, yeah. <laughs> over at E3 Convergence Gallery is a Saturday water watercoloring class with Bobby Almer. Starts at 1 o'clock. Class fee is $25 if you bring your own supplies. Additional $5 if you do not bring your own supplies. At Shakespeare and Company, Brian D. Ambrosio has got a more of a lecture and a discussion. It starts at 1 o'clock. It's called Shot Montana. So it's a history of Big Sky Cinema. He'll be talking about it on Friday night. But now Saturday, he'll be talking about top 15 movies made in Montana. And um, one of them is going to be about volcanoes. So pretty sweet. This next event is really cool. So this is going to be at the Village Senior Resi Residence. It starts at 1.30. It's going to be tomorrow. And it is a World War II presentation, Lucky Randy's War. So Randy Morey, who's 93, presents an interesting and entertaining stories of his service in the Navy during World War II. He was Lieutenant J.G., who was a radio man for the advance party in the landing on Wood Woodlark Island in New Guinea. Um, it's an hour-long program that is part of a two-part program. Part two takes place on November 6th at 1.30 in the same location. So on Sunday. Over at MCT, they've got Disney's 100 Dalmati 101 Dalmatians with Kids um, starting at 3 o'clock. And then also at three at three thirty at the Missoula Public Writing at the Missoula Public Library, this is National Novel Writing Month, and so it's a marathon writing event that challenges participants to write the first draft of a fifty thousand word novel during the month of November. Oh my gosh! So there are local chapters in more than six hundred regions around the world that organize in-person workshops and write-ins throughout the month. So you can drop by the boardroom three thirty-six each Saturday in November to participate in a write-in and build up your Word count so they're going to try to write 50,000 words that's pretty cool I don't know what the story is going to be about but you guys go show up and <laughs> check it out it sounds awesome <laughs> and we've got some African drumming and dancing going to be happening at Draftworks Brewing Company tomorrow at 6 Davey Barra will be there also at 6 at Imagination Brewing Company will be Brian J we've got live music with him 
And then also at six o'clock at Missoula Brewing Company in the Highlander Tap Room, River City Players we be playing. And then uh, is a Mountain Running Film Festival at the Wilma Theater also at six o'clock. And then at 6.30 at the University of Montana is Fall Studio Works. This is put on in the Part TV building. And it is, it's an informal dance concert that offers novices, experience, and professional choreographers the opportunity to choreograph for an experimental venue. Zoo Town Cabaret, uh, they present Red, White, and Blues. This will be at the Missoula Winery and Event Center. It starts at 7 o'clock. This is going to be kind of like a political satire event musical theater and then over at free cycles uh they've got a rise now party so it's rise now party with a purpose and so what it is they'll have live music from local artists food beer and raffle and then you can information on volunteering with rise now in southern mexico this winter sweet and then we've got some music so i it looks like there's a new venue called the joe below which I don't know where that is. That's probably below stage one twelve. Well, that's called the Real Lounge. Uh, they might have changed the name. Again. So they might have changed the name. Seriously, they could have. So the Joe <laughs> Below could also be the Real Lounge. I think it is. <laughs> it um, is. But so you guys look it up. Look it up online. <laughs> but like a villain, Rat Bath and Aaron Salzada Petrie will be playing there uh, starting at seven o'clock. And then overtime and the Blue Collar Band will be at Monks at nine. Absolutely, with Chris Moon at the Bad Lander at 9 o'clock. Furrow 6 will be at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30. Band in Motion will be at the Union Club at 9.30. And then the Dodgy Mountain Men Tour Closer will be the Top Hat Lounge at 10. So as always, you guys, check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, the Independent, and the Missoulian for more events happening in your community. And you can also log on to our, our website for more information by logging on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write all that crap out for our website. <laughs> uh -huh. You can also uh, like us on our Facebook page. We basically post every little video that we, we do on this page. You could follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. MCAT also has a Twitter. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on our Facebook page and find out more information or to watch us live online. Just go to MCAT.org. Yes. And of course, uh, we have an amazing video on demand page on MCAT.org. All you got to do is log on to MCAT.org. This is kind of like the pro uh, promotion page right here. Video on demand. And you just click on it. And I have a video already pulled up for you guys. And it is from the Hellgate Roller Girls final bout. And of course, I'm just going to talk over it. I don't want to, like, you know, because there's nothing really going on. Um, you know, it's just like their bout. And this is something that we did. Uh, we live streamed on MCAT. Oh, the quality looks pretty good on that television over there. Yeah, it um, does. Yeah, just uh, basic Roller Girls uh, stuff, and this is what's going to be uh, playing, um, I believe it will be playing at uh, 9 p.m. tonight. I didn't want to show it in a sub clip because it's just basically them rolling around. You don't hear what uh, a lot of people are talking about. Um, you hear announcers in the far background. We didn't mic the announcers, because we never really do, because last time we mic the announcers, it just came off very just loud and obnoxious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also you guys Not another... saying that they are. No, but, but the way, but. the feedback. But also, you guys, another reminder that tomorrow, starting at 1 o'clock for only $10, is um, MCAT's Saturday drop-in stop-motion oh, yes. animation camp. So from 1 to 5, it's only 10 bucks, Or you can do a half day from 1 to 3 or 3 to 5. We make stop-motion animation movies as well as live-action movies. And we just run around, have fun, hang out. Um, also, if you guys will bring, if you do want to come, please make sure that you bring your child a lunch or snack, as we do not provide that. And as no, you know, while I was talking, I was queuing up a, a nice video from our Day of the Dead parade that we live streamed on our uh, MCAT Facebook page, Missoula Community Access Television. If you like us on Missoula Community Access Television's Facebook page, you get notifications every time that MCAT is live, whether that be government meetings, parades, other community events that are happening right now. Then, but of course, here's <laughs> here's what happened um, Wednesday night. In case you missed it, and this is uh, a live streamed um, from the Festival of the Dead.
Yeah, a lot of photographers chose this day to take a bunch of pictures in front of our feed for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, uh, it was a lot. It was the same band that played last year in 2015 that kind of kicked off the uh, parade. Next, Dixieland music just kind of hanging out. Holding up those uh, prints, as you can see, you can see uh, it's a Bob Ross skull. Um, nice. <laughs> and um, yeah, it, they use steamrollers uh, to, uh, what's that called, steamrollers? Yep, steamroller uh, steam prints, yep. yep. So they actually physically use a steamroller to go over these huge prints. And these prints are usually made um, by the University of Montana's art students and yeah. art program. There was definitely a lot of stuff going on. Um, it was a nice uh, short parade. Um, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to dissolve back to us. Um, but of course, the screen prints are just like, you know, they have those giant things, they roll it over uh, these large prints. And of course, you can watch the whole entire uh, entirety of the parade, which is no longer than 25 minutes or so. I got a nice, I had a went up to the roof, got a nice uh, stationary shot from the roof, and then I got, uh, then of course, Ron was filming down below. So it was just a nice two camera deal for you guys uh, live and uh, just already out there and ready to go whenever you guys want to watch it. All you got to do is log on to MCAT's uh, Facebook page right here. Yeah. It's wonderful. And I, of course, all I did was just get a shotgun mic and just like stick it outside and that's just that. It and, looked good, uh, Scott. It looked good. It, yeah, I was surprised. Uh, definitely looks really good for, uh, you know, like web stream quality and that kind of stuff. So we're getting better and better at the whole live streaming thing. Um, the big, the next big announcement with live streaming is that we hope that we're going to get some new equipment and we're going to be trying to use try to use 4K cameras um, to live stream sports events for next year, um, particularly basketball season, so you see how that works out, because it's basketball season and wrestling will be a good, um, th that's the next high school sports live stream stuff, but of course we are running out of time. We're definitely running out of time. Um, yeah. but I just wanted to like go to the very end of the hour for sure, but thanks for joining us um, for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. And for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noah McAvoy. Here's ASAP Adonai, and we will see you guys all on Monday. Have a great weekend.